what's up everyone thank you for tuning in i'm tj this is tease time and uh today we're gonna do our front uh front main seal on the cummins the isb uh so why you have things apart and you're doing maintenance and stuff like that checking for leaks uh this is the front main seal on the the engine itself uh it does spin in itself within so it's pretty cool but uh since i'm going with the theme and i am doing like maintenance i'm tearing like a bunch of stuff apart uh you will see like in the previous videos like with the radiator uh the oil pan gasket stuff like that uh i'm just gonna throw this in like why i have stuff apart uh so it's gonna be like a, a three-part kind of like video like if you've been watching the videos uh it's gonna help you install this because i'm gonna skip the part about removing the radiator i'm gonna show you how to like take off like the front crank pulley and stuff like that but like for removal of the oil pan uh check the previous video and then for uh, the removal of the front radiator, check the previous videos uh, for that also. So uh, let's get into it, front main seal, and begin. All right, go ahead and release your uh, belt tensioner right there so you can get the belt loose. I already did that. Is that way you could get this crank pulley off without uh, that binding up being in the way. Uh, like I said before, like I already removed like all this stuff. Uh, check the video for uh, radiator removal uh, to see me removing to get to this stage. Empty your coolant. Uh, for me, I'm just gonna undo these uh, bolts going around right here. These six bolts to take that fan out. Uh, there is a center bolt right through there. I believe it's reverse thread. Uh, so I could just take that, pop that out, but then I have to worry about like the the fan clutch and all that magnet. There's a sensor and everything connected to that. Uh, so I'm hoping I'll just be able to take this off to get that out the way. You want as much room as possible because uh, we do have to remove the crank pulley. And behind that, there's a front uh, crankshaft. Uh, there's like a housing that houses the, the seal. Uh, that needs to come out and then just having a straight shot should make life a little easier. Uh, so right now we're just going to remove and I have everything like just uh, capped off and covered like with paper towels so no like dirt debris or any bugs crawling uh, the crevices while I'm trying to do this. Uh, so uh, enjoy. Remove, 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 install. <laughs> like so and then as you can see that's loose and these bolts they caught that like it came off smooth but like if that for any reason came like flying at you you want something to catch that you don't hurt yourself and that's the same thing with this with the ratchet straps just to keep those on there uh, the arms are on the the pulley so they don't slide but that's uh it's loose
All right, and what I was doing, I was just going ahead and just clean like around, and you want to fill around the crankshaft to make sure there's like nothing that's rough that's going to interfere with the seal going on on our berth surfaces on the housing also and then also like on the crank like where the the seal sits uh this seal it actually it rotates inside of itself so usually the seal stays in place with this and it spins with the crank and then there's like another piece that sits stationary uh, so this you usually don't really have to worry about too much like crank wear uh, but if you do, there are sleeves that they make that fit over this and there's a different seal and installation kits that you have to worry about. Uh, but just make sure that like all the old seal or the little uh, O-ring, uh, get all of the rubber material off and that is clean so that way it doesn't interfere with the, the new seal sealing up. And just make sure it's real clean and it's dry. And I'm going to put on the outside, I'm going to put like a little bit of the Loctite, the, the 545 on the outside part of the seal so that way it helps that seal so oil doesn't get on like the outside and then the this goes on is dry when this goes on to the crank itself uh, so that's where we're at right now uh, the seal is about to go in and i'm going to use uh like a wheel bearing press like there's a big round piece this right here this is what I'm going to use to like bang the seal on because for the diameter of this, it's just like it's the perfect size where I'll be able to get the, the seal like completely flat and don't have to worry about it being cockeyed or anything like that because like it's enough to touch the seal to bang that in and then also uh, this will keep it from, uh, it can't go like lower than that. So this should help. I should be able to get this like real like perfectly uh, flat on that like so. So, and then for the seal, as you can see, like it's just wide enough and it makes contact on this end where it should uh, go in nice and uh, straight. You want it in square. You don't want it at an angle because if it's at an angle, it will leak on you. Uh, so just make sure uh, if you're doing it with the removal of the, the whole housing that uh, it's, it's flush, it's square, it's not crooked. So that's like the most important part about putting this in is just making sure that it's uh, straight that even over putting the loctite on the outside like if this aluminum surface was marred up uh the 545 will help seal any of like imperfections on that uh so that's where we're at right now so seal time put the seal on and then we're gonna put the the crank or the the vicious dampener the crank dampener back on and we're just gonna use the the bolts to get that squared and then like if you have the space if it's hard to see your uh, timing marks on your crank uh, your uh, dampener make sure you like put a mark on it make life a little easier for you when you're adjusting your valves and stuff like that so uh patience uh loctite 545 on the outside bang that in square uh crank pulley dampener on and we should be done should be <laughs>
there it is. It's in. It's flush. Take your time. I was using uh, the wheel bit, uh, the wheel bearing uh, press tools to use the different diameters to get it over like this front lip. Just make sure like there's no jagged edges right here when you're putting it on. And I just use that to get it started. And then I use the other sizes just to kind of like fit around this lip. Uh, they do sell tools where you can just put this on, tighten it down, and it will uh, set it to the right height. But uh, you don't want this to be uh, crooked in here. So uh, just take your time and just actually make sure like it's, it's uh, nice and it's flat. Uh, it's not crooked. Uh, and let this set up, let this seal sit here for like a few hours before you uh, go ahead and uh, start your engine just so it could get like adjusted, uh, like set to the, the crankshaft itself. So like when you put this in, uh, just leave it and let everything uh, seal up and set before you actually go ahead and start this up. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to put the crank pulley on, the dampener, and then I got a, a tool. Let me show you. Uh, this right here is a barring tool. Like if you didn't have an impact to break this loose, uh, there is a place you put this. I'll show you. It's uh, up back in there. I'll show you in a second. But uh, this is a bar tool where you'll hold it in place. You'll be able to like turn this without actually touching this stuff. You just turn this and it turns the whole gear train to spin that. And then you're going to use this to hold it when you torque this down also so it doesn't spin on you. Use this. But like to break everything use, I use the impact. Uh, so I didn't need to use this. But like to tighten stuff down, you might want to consider getting like a bar tool. Just to make sure you uh, get this torque to spec. <laughs> And that's the barring tool location. It's all right. There, where I have the wrench on. That's a half inch. I have it sitting between the frame and the battery. Uh, make sure you have your uh, battery disconnected if you're doing this. I'm going to use the frame rail or it's either going to be uh, the, the starter that's going to keep that in place while I tighten the, the dampener, the crank dampener. But uh, that's the location. Bada boom, bada bing, it's in, it's installed, it's finished. Uh, if you took off your uh, your uh, dampener and you were to replace your seal and you saw like the case, the housing was leaking, uh, that'd be a good time to replace that. Uh, you could do it just because, but like it wasn't leaking, it wasn't wet around like the, the mounting area and everything. So I decided to leave that to save myself some uh, time and a headache. Uh, just replace the, the front main seal itself. Uh, there are tools to install that, like uh, to press fit it on there instead of doing like what I was doing and uh, just taking your time. It takes a little bit of time, but just uh, be patient. You could do it. Uh, just uh, pay attention that you're not cocking the seal and that the, the outer case and stuff, you're not uh, bending or getting that out of place. And it uh, should go on. Just uh, take your time and just make sure like the actual the crank, the nose of that is uh, smooth. There's no burrs or anything. Uh, but go ahead, get that on. Uh, tighten this on if you have a rear gear train. Turn this on. Uh, these bolts get torqued to 37 foot pound. It's a two torque sequence, so 37 foot pounds. And then once those are torqued to 37, then they get an additional uh, 90 degrees of angle uh, put on that also. And then put your belt on, half inch, uh, release the tensioner, uh, route your belt how it was routed before. Uh, put your fan back on. And then just uh, go ahead and start uh, reattaching like everything that was uh, removed in the front. Uh, so by the time you get everything like reassembled, like your radiator and everything uh, put back on, 
uh, your seal should be good to go. You should be able to like start it up and check for leaks. Uh, so uh, we have that video is coming eventually when I get everything done and filled. We're gonna do a, a video of me starting and just check it for like leaks and just making sure like everything's topped off and everything is good. Uh, but if you're done, if you're at that stage where you can start, uh, go ahead, fill it back up. If you drain your oil, if you're just doing maintenance, uh, get everything set and uh, double check for leaks and make sure you have everything tightened. You don't want anything to come loose while you're driving. Uh, so just go back through, check everything, double check it, make sure everything is tight and snugged and it's good to go. And nothing's going to come loose on you. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate the time. Thank you for viewing. If you haven't done so already, like and subscribe. If you have any questions or any comments, just leave it down in the comment section. And I'll catch you next Wednesday. So until next Wednesday, slow motion is better than no motion. <laughs> so I'll see you next Wednesday. Peace, TJ.